Eric Darling here with Darling Data, uh, and uh, we're going to talk about a couple oh-so exciting updates to uh, SP Quickie Store and sorry SP underscore 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 Quickie Store and SP underscore Pressure Detector. Uh, I apologize for the little hat line on my head. Uh, I was out working on some stuff in the backyard. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little sweaty, but you know this isn't smell of vision so uh, I don't think we have too much to worry about there. But um, <clears throat> short video. Uh, just because I haven't recorded anything in a bit. I got a bunch of stuff in the queue to record, but you know, uh, oh, life gets busy and uh, hazy sometimes. So uh, <laughs> uh, I don't always have as much time to do this as I'd like. But anyway, uh, in order to uh, keep my promise of a brief video, uh, we're going to look at a couple of the things that uh, I've added to my wonderful free open source stored procedures. All right, so the first one <clears throat> is SP underscore, underscore <laughs> Quickie Star, the teeny bit of a tongue twister. Uh, I added a parameter, and I, I haven't fully incorporated the feature yet, and by that I mean I haven't added a way to like uh, give a list of databases to get or give a list of databases to skip. Um, I'm going to see how much this gets used before I spend what would probably be a silly amount of time um, uh, dealing with that. But anyway, uh, if w before with SP Quickie Store, you used to have to give it a specific database name. And um, well, there, there are sirens out there. Hopefully, hopefully that adds to the charm of, of my, my straight out of New York recordings. But it used to be you have to, you have to, you used, to you used to have to give SP Quickie Store a specific database name to look at and uh, for various reasons um, like people having Qu Query Store on in multiple databases, uh, not knowing which databases have it, um, me being lazy, <laughs> I've uh, added a way to just go look at all of the databases that have Query Store uh, properly enabled and return data from those. So if we execute this, uh, we are going to get back a slightly longer result set than we normally would, <coughs> uh, and we're going to get back, of course, uh, data from multiple databases. So uh, it's not going to be all that interesting because I don't do a lot of work in the other databases on my uh, on my server. Uh, you know, like I have uh, my clean copy of the Stack Overflow database that I don't allow any updates to. So if I munge anything up in the my actual copy. I can just reset that data uh, pretty easily. And of course, like everyone else, I have a database called crap that I do random crap in. A lot of what ends up in here is, of course, like um, if anyone is ever so kind as to, <laughs> you know, uh, add create table <laughs> and whatnot statements to a stack exchange question over on dba.stackexchange.com, then uh, I use the crap database to uh, sort of sandbox all that stuff. So, like I said, there's not a whole lot of interesting stuff in these other databases, but uh, the Stack Overflow 2013 database does uh, see a bit more action than uh, than the rest. Well, actually, see, see, it sees all the action because that's where I do the majority of my my demo writing work because uh, that's the one that I will use for training, precons, blog posts, and all that stuff. So, uh, might as well keep it all as homogenous as possible. Uh, the other incredibly exciting addition, uh, news from 2005, is uh, I've added uh, a disk latency report to SP Pressure Detector. Uh, this will only come up if you have, uh, I should probably just stick this in the script so everyone's aware that what to check equals all. Well, that doesn't say all, does it? That doesn't say all either. That says all. Rocking and a rolling. Uh, so what to check has to be set for all to pull this back. If you're looking for just CPU or just memory, uh, this check and the tempdb check get skipped. So by that I mean if we run this for, uh, let's say, CPU, we will just get, um, <coughs> we'll get <coughs> weight stats back, and then we'll get information about the CPU stuff. Um, 
I'm a little on the fence about skipping weight stats because um, often I use those in demos when I'm looking at something specific. And, uh, you know, I kind of like having those show up no matter what. But, you know, if you have differing opinions, feel free to hit me up. But if you use CPU or memory, then things get skipped. But if we do all, we get a bit more back. Uh, we get back <coughs> um, the weight stats. And then down here, this is the new bit. And uh, by new, I mean, um, I mean, this stuff has been around in SQL Server DMVs for just about ever. I was just, I don't know, somewhere between hesitant and lazy about adding it in here, just because, um, you know, usually when I care about CPU or memory pressure, uh, disk is a much smaller factor, but I did decide to uh, add this in just in case disk is also like, like, especially for memory, if we care about, like, you know, let's say we ca we really care about how much page I.O. latch is going on <clears throat> on the server or how much write log is going on on the server. And, you know, there's, like, a lot of it, and, then like, you know, it's, like, slow for some, like, it's, like, it's just way more of that weight than we would care to see generally. Then I do kind of want to look at disks to see if there are any, you know, sort of inherent bottlenecks there. Um my first implementation of this, I only, I, I had, uh, when actually the, the default value for this is 100 milliseconds for minimum disk latency MS. Uh, the default value is 100 milliseconds. I'm using 20 just to make sure stuff shows up here. But uh, this section here uh, sort of mimics some of the other sections in here where it tells you how many hours we've been up, which drive the files are on. And I know I'm a bad DBA because I have everything on the C drive, but it's a VM. Uh, sue me. Um, the, the disks are the disks. It's not like they're, not like they're going anywhere special. Um, the database name that the files belong to, and then database file details. So this tells us which file is involved, uh, if it's a data file or a transaction log file, you see that changes there, and then it gives the full path to the file. Um, I, I used to have this so that database name was sort of incorporated in, into this sort of uh, string, this built up string of details, but I don't know, it, it kind of made it a little too busy and I couldn't think of like a good, like I used it as a backslash to separate it. And then, you know, I figure a lot of people want to filter by which database they, they look at if they like paste this into an Excel file or something. So uh, I, I, I left this separated out. Um, you know, I'm not crazy about it either way, but uh, I don't know, that, that's just what I did. So deal with it. Uh, then kind of getting into um, uh, what, what we get back. Uh, we get the size of the file that, uh, that is listed here. Uh, we get the average read stall, uh, we get the average write stall, uh, we get how many gigabytes have been uh, read, how many have been written, the total read count and the total write count. Um, I don't really care about the total, like like minutes or seconds or milliseconds of stall in these cases, um, just because the average is usually what people care about, like, does this thing suck on average, like, like, how, like how slow are the reads and writes on average from this? So I left that in, uh, and then these are just sort of, you know, to get a sense of, like, how busy things are. I work on some, or, or rather, I have worked and work on some systems where uh, there have just been, uh, like, like terabytes of writes to TempDB for databases that are, like, 100, 200 gigs. And in those cases, I do, I do kind of, like, want to be like, well, what's going on with TempDB? Because that's... <clears throat> You're doing a lot of stuff in there. What's all the stuff you're doing in there? Uh, and that, that especially might relate to, you know, if we have, I don't know if there's any going to show up, but if we have any uh, weights up here that are potentially related to uh, TempDB contention, then we might, uh, we might care to know, uh, you know, that stuff about TempDB. But, you know, like a lot of other DMVs and SQL Server, um, you know, the averages include when terrible things go on. So like with TempDB, if you're the kind of, born in the wild fool who still does index rebuilds or uh you know you or you know you're the kind of smart person who uh you know does dbcc check db you might see a lot of temp db activity in, at some points on the server that might make the averages spike up the, these average like the averages here aren't necessarily going to be related to user workload so like we don't, i don't have like a great way of distinguishing that because this is just a snapshot it's not like a time slice of when things uh went up uh if you need that stuff 
get a proper monitoring tool? Uh, should a proper SQL Server monitoring monitoring tool ever come into existence again? It would be nice uh, if you if you got that and used it so that you um, you could uh, you could see that sort of thing. So uh, there we go. There we have it. Uh, two exciting new features in my store procedures. Uh, I'll put the links to my to the, to the GitHub repos for these things in my in the in the video notes. Uh, and I don't know. Happy happy troubleshooting, I guess. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you like, enjoy, use, find some value in these store procedures that I have spent hun many many hundreds, maybe even thousands of hours in my life. Uh, working on. Uh, if not, um, I don't know. I hope you're using. I hope it's because you're using a different day. I hope it's because you use Oracle or Postgres, and you just, you you just can't run these there. But anyway, uh, 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 like and subscribe if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, if not, then um, I don't know. You'll just have to wait until YouTube randomly recommends one of my videos to you based on prior search or viewing history. All right. Thanks for watching.